All right, kids. Today we got a case study in um, Chevy 350 5.7 Vortec. This uh, what 96 through a one minimum. I know it goes further each direction. I think I don't know. All I know is um, what we ran into today or actually ran into it a couple months ago and I just now had time to fucking deal with it today. Dig the hair, man. This thing's fucking shit. It's awesome. I was, it was a lot colder earlier and I was wearing a hat, so got my hair all fucked up. Anywho, um, initial complaint was uh, starter's not working. So, so somebody uh, said, yeah, the starter's not working. It's got a dead battery. All right. And so I went out there, uh, middle of freaking BFE, with a starter, put a starter in there, thing fired right up. Okay, problem solved, right? Yeah, it started a little rough. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of resistance there at some point in the uh, rotation of the motor, of the crankshaft. Didn't know really what it was. Did not spend a whole lot of time at the time. All I know is I consistently started it about eight times in a row and I'm like, okay, problems basically resolved as far as I can tell. Now, what we ended up doing, or what ended up happening was, the next step in this was we ended up uh, getting a call saying, starter's out again, Malachi, what the hell? So, went, we dropped the starter, couldn't find anything really wrong with it, exchanged it out, doing the same thing. At that point in time, I really looked at it and noticed that the teeth on one part of the flywheel were all chewed up. Or flex plate, I'm sorry, correct terms. The flex plate teeth were not completely bald, but there was a good chunk of them section missing. So we then removed uh, the transmission, replaced the flex plate. It really wasn't all that expensive, maybe $50 or $40 or something like that. The flex plates are pretty cheap for those things. It's a Chevy 3 fucking 50, man. Really. Everything's cheap. So, put that in there. Put the new starter in. Um, truck ran fine for about two weeks. No problems at all. Then it did it again. Well, the owner, he changed out the starter this time himself. And I think this is, that's the point, and I'm not really sure because I think I would have caught this, but I, you know, I don't really know because I never looked, but I believe that this was the case is he didn't tighten the starter bolts real well. Um, he tried starting it and it kicked back really, really bad. And it, was, it had been doing this. We, we couldn't figure out why it would hit a certain point in the rotation of the crank and it just would. Now, if you got the thing to fire up, the thing usually ran okay. Um, this thing was a beautifully running engine. It's got like a, I don't know, not that many, maybe 170,000, which on a Chevy 350 is like half its life. Um, so it's a middle-aged man at this point. It should be running pretty good. Well, I discovered that uh, that starter, we believe is the one, uh, cracked both of the bosses on the engine block that they screw into. Now this has the offset bolts. There's straight across bolts pattern, and then there's offset. Most all Chevys will have the offset pattern. Every now and then you run into a starter that's got the straight across pattern. Um, well, and most of the blocks are actually drilled for both. Well, after doing a ton of research, and find, after I discovered that they're broken, I'm like, well, the only option here is pull the engine, pull the oil pan, maybe try and get something in there, pinch the little cracked little part off, weld it up, run a tap through it, make sure it's, the threads are clear and it should be good. That's a lot of freaking hassle, especially for a vehicle that's parked on grass in mud. Well, um, we ended up uh, looking into it, uh, I ended up looking into it deeper and found a starter that had the straight across pattern. It's meant for street rods and hot rods and it fits the double straight across bolt pattern. Not the offset and the straight across, but two different versions of the straight across. And the reason why I say there's two different versions, um, some starters, uh, the, it has to do with where the starter mounts for how many uh, teeth are on the flywheel. 
in 85, 86, they switched over to a larger flywheel, flex plate, on the Chevy 350 motors. Slightly larger diameter, more teeth. The starter's teeth gear drive is the same, that doesn't matter. Um, contrary to what anybody tells you, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, so I ended up finding a street rod uh, one, had the double straight across pattern, it's got four bolt holes, two on one side, two on the other. Took a couple of uh, long threaded uh, bolts, just wanted to make sure, even though I could have used the correct bolts now as it turned out, but whatever. Um, and had to shim it pretty much, or quite a bit, to get it to fit, but got it to basically work. The problem was it was still hitting the kickback section. Like, oh fuck, and the new flex plate by this point in time is already missing a whole bunch of fucking material from the teeth. Like, oh shit. So, so we haven't gotten to, into our root of problem. So I'm figuring it's got to be, my guess is it's got to be a timing issue. So, um, or ignition. It's got spark on all eight cylinders. Fuel injectors seem to be firing. Starting fluid has absolutely no effect or minimal effect. Loosening the distributor and rotating it did cause the engine to get rid of the kickback completely. The thing was cranking over just beautifully. Smooth, but it would have a real hard time starting. You'd be lucky if you can get it to start. It didn't really want to run. So what I ended up looking into, like, okay, well, let's check the, you know, I checked the crankshaft sensor. It, sent, it tested out good. Camshaft sensor tested out good. Ignition coils working the way it's supposed to. Ignition modules working the way it's supposed to. Where's the fucking problem? Uh, pull the distributor. Look at the distributor gear, because that can wear, especially if you haven't been changing your oil or some kind of lack of maintenance or something like that, or just worn, and that'll change your timing significantly. The last thing I was going to check was the timing chain, because maybe there's a ton of slop in there, cam and crank aren't lined up. That'll cause you. It will. Well, I ended up running across a, a TSB a while back um, on this issue about this kickback, which is the phrase that everybody was using. Um, what happens is when your crankshaft position sensor might be going bad, the PCM interprets the signal wrong and advances the timing or retards it. I think it advances it like 50 fucking degrees, which is way beyond spec to run, make this engine run right. Um, and I wasn't 100% positive that this was the issue. Um, I, I personally haven't run into it before. Now I know what to look for, so maybe I'll see if I see this again. This should apply to any 5.7 Vortec motors of the Chevy 350 traditional, not any of the fucking LS shit with a 5.7 or anything like that, where the crankshaft sensor's on the front behind the harmonic balancer. It's held in by one 8 millimeter screw um, there is a, also a second uh, issue on this is some of the new crankshaft sensors in these situations um, have a little thin washer shim to spacer it out like a few thousandths of an inch, ten thousandths of an inch or something like that because the heat of the engine distorts the plastic timing, uh, the, time, the cover, the plastic cover on the front of the motor and it distorts it and then what happens is you put a brand new sensor in there and it mashes up against the teeth or some stupid shit like that. I don't fucking know. All I know is they make a washer for it. It's a few dollars. You might end up needing it. If you put a brand new sensor in there and it tears up your freaking brand new crankshaft sensor, it'll do that. So if you've got a situation where you're trying to crank your engine over and it cranks on part of the cycle but then it hits like a rock hard with that 50 degrees or so timing advance, it's sparking way too soon with fuel in the combustion chamber before the engine, before that piston is all the way up at the top and it causes it to slam backwards and reverse rotation of the crankshaft while the starter's trying to make it go the, one, the other direction. Miss, just mistimed at that point. Um, it's really hard on your starter, you'll break your fucking engine block, you'll break your starter, you'll break your flex plate. So if you run into this thing, um, I fixed it with a junkyard sensor. I was not 100% positive that this was my uh, issue because I did not have an advanced enough code reader at the time right now to do this. So, uh, 
that's how I that's how I resolve the issue myself was like I said I just uh, oh, hooked it up to the uh, I hooked it up with a new sensor um, put the uh, make sure the distributor was back in its mark if you pull the distributor if you play with the distributor before you loosen that motherfucker take a motherfucking punch in a chisel or chisel or some kind in a hammer and mark the fucking distributor where it goes into the intake manifold. If you do not do this, you will fucking regret it because you cannot fuck with timing on these things. It's not old school where you just adjust it. Nah, nah, nah. The computer is expecting specific from the crank and the cam in exactly the same location. No matter what. It will make its own adjustments. You do not make that adjustment. You are not qualified. No matter what, Bubba, your cousin, brothers, nephews whatever now um i don't know the exact tps or tbs number or whatever it is or tsp number whatever but you can look it up maybe um there is an issue on it and if you got that try a junkyard crankshaft position sensor they only eight eight little things uh use a long extension to get past the uh the steering linkage and a ratchet comes right out unplug it and uh, maybe five bucks at a junkyard um, 15 to 20 bucks on eBay probably OEM is maybe 50 bucks on eBay or Amazon I don't really know I didn't look it up and they're around 60 bucks in the auto parts store for a for a um, generic brand or off-brand BWD or whatever the fuck brand they want to use all right hopefully at some point this can help somebody and you can resolve your issue. So once again, peace out, bitches.